So it is um, early in the morning, about seven o'clock. Um, there's still kind of a dew on the grass and uh, that's the best time to pick herbs. Uh, so I've heard that all my life. I can't tell you exactly the reason. I think um, the more, pot more potency up in the plant um, in the morning. And um, so before they get hot and dry is when it's best to pick your herbs. And so uh, there's some of that um, ironweed. I've got videos on the ironweed. If you haven't seen that, uh, look at some of our foraging playlist and you'll find um, all kinds of different plants in our foraging playlist and ironweed is one of those. Okay, we are at the self heal and um, I'm gonna make a uh, tincture out of the self heal. Now it is starting to die and seed out, but there's some that's still good. I'm gonna get some of this that's still um, um, green, but you could use some of the leaves maybe off of this, but it's pretty dry. So here's the good one. And I'll put a picture here of what this looks like when it's good and vibrant. So there's not a lot of it that's still uh, green. A lot of it has, like I said, died out. So I'm going to get what I can of the green and make a tincture. I have some tincture of this. But I also learned uh, a few more things that it's good for. And I'm going to try to dry some. I should have gathered more of it this year. Um, it is also good for uh, stopping bleeding like yarrow is. Yarrow is a good uh, congenulant that stops bleeding and so is self-heal. There's that mealy blue sage. It is taking over this bed, so I'm probably going to have to get rid of that. Um, it's really taking over this um, raised bed, and I don't want it in here that thick. So I'll probably either cut that way back, maybe dig up a piece and put in a pot or something somewhere. I really think it's beautiful and I like it, but I don't want it taking over my bed. I have uh, the marigolds are taking over um, and in here, and they are really taking over my, I may have to cut that out too, uh, my uh, lavender. I've got lavender in there, and uh, I've got this lemon basil. Anyway, I'm letting it seed. I may collect some of those seeds so that I can plant it again next year, but my lavender there, I'm hoping it stays. I may dig it up and take it in the house for the winter but i don't like all this stuff hiding it so i'm gonna have to get out here and clear some of that out to let it have its space these marigolds are really taking it over and um, anyway but i want to pick some of this to take in for a bouquet is what i'm about to do there's a pretty little bouquet for the house and then i've got my other things in my basket and my little snippers, those are the best snippers. Uh, a dear friend gave me those for my birthday. And um, I just love those little kind of needle nose snippers. Anyway, all right, let's get this in here and get to the house with it all. Well, on the way by, I noticed I have one pepper in there that needs picking. He's a pretty good size. That's a poblano pepper pretty good size one. I'm gonna come back out in a little bit and get him and eat him. Of course, anytime that I come in from foraging or weeding or in my garden, I grab my jewelweed soap and uh, wash with that. Um, it helps keep down the itchies and any poison ivy or poison oak or anything like that you might have gotten into, it will stop that. 
uh, Jewel Weed. It's a uh, Jewel Weed La <coughs> Lard and La Soap. And it is great for uh, stopping the itches. And uh, that, we have that on our um, Etsy store at Stringfield Ridge. I shook these plants good uh, and then let them sit in the basket out on the porch for a little bit, just so that any bugs get out of there. And uh, I've, now I've come in um, after church, had church, came in after church. <laughs> and um, I have uh, separated those out and shook them some more. And I'll show you what I got here. We're gonna start with the self heal and we're gonna make a tincture. And I do wanna get some more self heal to dry and make a powder for uh, the blood stopping. Uh, but uh, today I'm gonna make a tincture with it and I can use that for uh, different things. I also would like to get some, uh, you could also uh, make a salve. So you could uh, do this in oil and uh, and make a salve with it. But today we're making tincture. And I'm gonna turn you down here a little and show you this. So here's my self heal. I separated from my other plants that I had went out and got. And I've shook them off good several times. And so I just shake them off outside. And then even after I bring them inside, I shake them a little um, and get anything off of there. So just shaking them, wipe that off good in case there's any little thing. Now these have been, you know, shaken several times and left outside for a little while. So next uh, I'm gonna cut them up and put them in a jar. So I like to just use a mason jar and you wanna cut these tops off and the leaves off. You don't want that stem cause those stems are pretty thick and it would take a long time for it to, uh, draw anything out, plus there's not that much in this stem. So we're just gonna take and cut these flowers off in here and leaves until we get about 40% of this jar filled. So with a tincture, you want about 40% uh, percent plant and 60% um, alcohol or Whatever you're doing, you can do uh, apple cider vinegar, but it doesn't last as long. I like to do tinctures in alcohol uh, because it lasts a, a good long time. And uh, so, I also, you can use a cheap vodka, but I don't like to use vodka because it, it just tastes nasty to me. I use brandy just because, to me, it tastes a little bit better. Also, with the brandy, if you're using your uh, uh, tincture for anything like a uh, chest cold or bronchitis or any of that stuff that's in the chest, the brandy will open up those uh, 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 capillaries in the chest and the lungs will open up the lungs and help the medicine get in there better. So uh, that's another reason I like to use brandy. So anyway, um, and it just tastes, it's just easier to get down with brandy. And then I usually take it with a little uh, honey also, just to make it easier to get down. And I'm gonna pinch some of that off. All right, we are. I may have enough of this to dry even after I get this in here, because we only want about, about probably just a little less than half of a jar, I'm gonna say will be about 40% of it, something like that. Half a jar or less than a half a jar of your product. Of your plant product, your plant material doesn't take too much. And I might still be able to uh, dry some of that. I want it to be good and plenty strong though. So let's see where I'm at. I'm gonna pack that down just a little, get a little more in there. Pinch that off there. I'm 
Okay, that's probably good. That's about half. And then we're just going to fill the rest of the way up with this brandy, 80 to 100 proof. And I hope I have enough. I don't have as much brandy as I thought I did. So, yeah, that's good. Good. I got a swig, about a swig left there. <laughs> uh, so, all right, so I got that full. So, there you go. That is all there is to it. Um, I'll shake this up. I'll put the lid on and shake this up and label it. Don't forget to always label because uh, you will forget, just like I do, if I do anything and don't label it. I had that happen once and I never forgot again <laughs> because I wasted, um, I spilled a little bit of that too. I wasted um, a whole tincture by not labeling it a long time ago when I first started doing this. Probably, oh gosh, I've actually been doing this for about 20 years, but really getting serious into it and understanding what I was doing, I'm gonna say it's been about seven years. So uh, the more you do it, the more you learn and know. Now shake it up good and then I'll let that sit for um, at least four weeks, at least a month or two. I'm bad about leaving it and just not taking it out, but it doesn't draw out. Uh, it doesn't really extract any more medicine after a couple of months. So after a couple of months, you could strain this and uh, put some in your uh, dropper bottles or something, or you can leave it in here. Uh, what I usually do is put a little bit in a dropper bottle. So I've got that dropper um, uh, measurement and then leave the rest in the jar. And a lot of times I don't even strain it. I just leave it. Um, so, but you can. Um, you can leave it or strain it, either one you want to. So, that's kind of loose. I'm spilling that a little bit. I'm gonna take that off and put this other one on and see why. And check that. See why this is spilling. Try that again. Every time I shake that, it's spilling, so I'm not so sure I don't have a loose. That one's better. I must have a loose lid there that's got a little bit of something, or I had something on the jar lid. Anyway, so I'm going to label that and date it, and uh, in a couple of months, I will pour some of it into a dropper bottle for measurement, and that is the self-heal that is good for so many things headaches and blood pressure and uh, healing for wounds and um, good for your liver, good for liver health. And uh, um, it's a diuretic, it's uh, antibacterial and, um, and uh, so just good for lots of things. I'm not good with Latin names, but I think it is called Polaris vulgaris. <laughs> Um, and I don't, I'm not good at pronouncing Latin names, but anyway, it's good for so many things. Uh, that's why it's called self heal and, uh, or heal all. Some people call it heal all, but it's just a wonderful plant to have and it grows wild, um, all over the place. So look for it, find it and utilize it. And, uh, you, like I said, you could also make a salve. You could put this in oil and then make a salve and use it externally or like this internally or dry it and make a tea. Um, so just tons of benefits for this plant. So thanks for watching. Hey, give me a thumbs up and comment, okay? And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And, um, watch our playlist. Uh, we have uh, two foraging playlists and uh, you can see all kinds of plants, um, uh, wild foraging uh, and plants in that playlist. So uh, watch that if you haven't, okay? Thanks.